Think of it like this. There are two circles, a circle of authenticity and a circle of relatability. And these two circles tend to overlap, and that overlap is the sweet spot. And that's where you want to be operating in. Whenever you're outside of that sweet spot, that's when things go south and you alienate people. Okay, so let's take the example of someone who's operating in that circle of authenticity, but outside of that sweet spot. Okay, this is the person who might meet someone new and think, you know what? They're the one. That's my soulmate. And I've watched all these videos saying, be yourself. I've read these books saying, be authentic. Open up to the one. Open up to that potential partner. Don't hold anything back. If they're the one, they'll stay. And here comes the baggage. And they just unload it all right off the bat. They're like, well, you know, this thing happened to me in my childhood, and this other thing happened to me in my childhood, and this thing happened in my childhood, and uh, these family members are fighting, and those family members are fighting, and everyone's fighting, and there's all this drama, and you know what, it's still affecting me, and I have this drama here, and that drama here, and this is what I'm dealing with, and these are my insecurities, and this is everything that's going on in my mind, and here you go. <laughs> Okay, and yes, is that person being authentic? Yes. Are they being honest? Are they telling the truth? Are they just putting it all out there? Yes. Are they doing what the video said? Are they doing what the book said? Yes. Does it work? No. Does it scare that potential partner away? Yes. Why? Because it's outside of that sweet spot. They're being authentic, but they are not being relatable. Okay, so that's one example. Another is someone who's in a business meeting, you know, talking to a potential client, talking to their boss, to a colleague, and they decide to crack a joke. They're like, you know what? I kind of want to lighten the mood here, and uh, here's a joke that just kind of pops up. It's not the most appropriate joke, but hey, it's authentic, right? I want to be acting from a place of power, my authentic place of power. Here we go and they launch this joke that is not appropriate to the context, that alienates the client, the boss, the colleague, and that doesn't help them, okay? Are they being authentic? Yes, they're being authentic. Are they being relatable? No, it's a lose, okay? Another example is someone who's out. They're out with their friends and they're having a good time and suddenly they're like, well, I kind of feel like getting crazy tonight. That's what's authentic to me. Let me take my shirt off, grab some drinks from the bar, pour them all over my head. You know what? I feel authentic being crazy right now. Is that going to work? Is that going to help them? No, that is a lose. Sure, they're being authentic in a crazy way, but not relatable. They're operating outside of that sweet spot. Okay, now on the other side, someone could be operating in that circle of relatability, but outside the sweet spot. And this is the classic people pleaser. It's the person who compromises their authenticity and only focuses on being relatable. It's the person who says yes when they mean no, or no when they mean yes, just to fit in, just to be accepted. It's the person who's always agreeing with everything, just hoping to be liked. And does that work? No. Does it alienate people? Yes. Okay, why? Because if you're always agreeing with what the other person says, and really sink into this, what do you become? You don't become someone that they like being around. You become boring. You become a mirror. That's literally it, right? Imagine, you're talking to someone and everything that you say, everything that you do, they're like, that's great, that's great. Do you like this? Yeah, I like that too. Uh, do you like that? Yeah, I like that too. Uh, do you not like that? Nope, I don't like that either. Okay, um, this is what I did today. That's great. Uh, this is what I'm going to do tomorrow. That's great. Ugh, how boring. Okay, that doesn't work. And not only that, but resentment will start building up in that person. Why? Because they're not being true to themselves. There's that little voice inside saying, let them know what you really think. Show them who you truly are. And what's that person doing? Shut up, little voice. Shut up. And they compromise their authenticity. And then resentment kicks in. You can write this down, authenticity above all else. Okay, authenticity above all else. Never, ever compromise your authenticity. Okay, it'll never work. However, it's not just authenticity, it's authenticity plus relatability. That is the sweet spot. There's a magical land where you can be both. That's where it's win-win.
Now to do this, what you have to understand when it comes to authenticity is that being authentic isn't just doing or saying one thing. You know, we think that at any moment in time, there's just one thing that's authentic to me. Saying that inappropriate joke, you know, is an example. But that's not true. There are many things that are authentic to you. There's a whole list of things you can choose from at any point in time. Okay, that's the first thing to really understand. And the second, when it comes to relatability, is you must expand your awareness beyond yourself you know, the little me, 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 me world. Whenever you're out or interacting with someone, it's all about me. What do they think about me? How do I feel? Mm, what's going on in my head? You must expand beyond that and also be aware of the other person and the environment, okay? You must become aware of the context and then adjust, okay? Always be adjusting. It's like playing that game Battleship. You know, where you say or do something which is in your circle of authenticity. Never compromise your authenticity. Always start there. And then, instead of just being me, 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 how do I feel? What about me? You expand your awareness and you look at how the people around you and the environment around you reacts to what you just said or did. And if it's a little too out there, it's not relatable, it's not too late, it's not over, adjust. Okay, you're like, well, that was a little too far out there. Let me try something that is still authentic, but perhaps a little more chill, a little more relatable. Okay, where you're not compromising your authenticity, but you're moving a little closer to that sweet spot. And even then, it might be a little too far out there. You know, you try the next thing and you look, you're like, hmm, I guess I missed, like playing Battleship, until you find the sweet spot and you sink the ship. Okay, so once more, authenticity is not just one thing. There are many things you can do or say at any point in time, and you want to say or do the things that are authentic to you that sink the ship, okay, that are in that sweet spot. And this changes depending on the context, okay, the context of the environment, the people around you, and the context of the person you're talking to, what they're saying, how they're feeling. Okay, if you're in an environment where, let's just say, there's someone speaking and everyone's really quiet listening to that person, a seminar context, that's not time to just stand up and share your life story. Even though it might feel authentic, you're like, you know what, I feel really inspired by this speech, time to give my own. <laughs> no. Yeah, that might be authentic, but it's not appropriate, okay? It's not relatable. Or if a conversation is all about business, you're talking to someone who's obsessed with business and suddenly you're like, well, let me tell you about spirituality and meditation. It's like, no, it's not appropriate to the topic of the conversation or what that person is really into at that moment in time, or even how they feel. If you come in and you're just really intense and you see them kind of uh, like take a step back, like it's a little too much, chill out. It's not about being, well, you know what? It's authentic to be intense. No, take a step back, relax a bit. And this doesn't mean compromise your authenticity. It's not like I must be 100% intense or nothing. Find the middle ground, okay? Find that sweet spot, sink the ship. Now, there are two factors that will expand that overlap and sweet spots, and they are comfort and value. Okay, write this down, comfort and value. In terms of comfort, the more time you spend with someone, for example, the more that sweet spot grows, and eventually it will be authentic and relatable to start unloading that baggage. You know, this doesn't mean never unload the baggage. If you like someone, hide your past, not at all. It just means that there's a time and place. And the more comfort you have with that person, the more you get to know each other, the more you spend time together, then eventually that sweet spot grows, okay? The overlap grows and it becomes authentic and relatable to share that baggage, okay? That's in terms of comfort. So comfort will affect it. Value is the other thing that will affect it, where the more value you have, Okay, where let's just say you have something that someone really wants for you, or you have a lot of status, or you have access to a lot of cool things, because there's that element of value that's introduced, you will be able to say things that are, let's just say, further out there. So comfort and value will help expand that sweet spot. And the other thing I want to add on the flip side is that sometimes, and really let this sink in, sometimes there is no sweet spot. Sometimes those two circles just don't overlap. And this is when you're talking to someone or you're in an environment where you're just not meant to be there. 
You're just not meant to get along with that person. There's just not that natural chemistry, if you will. And that's fine, okay? We've been conditioned to believe that everyone should like us and we should get along with everyone, but that's not true, okay? You're not meant to like everybody and not everybody is meant to like you. This isn't good, this isn't bad, it's natural. Okay, if you're in a room and there's a hundred different people, you're not gonna like them the same amount. There's some people where they didn't even do anything wrong and they, you just don't click. You're like, you know, I have nothing against that person, but uh, there's no chemistry. We didn't really connect and that's fine. Okay, in those instances where the circles don't overlap, the only way for you to connect is to compromise your authenticity. Okay, and once more, as we discussed earlier in this video, it doesn't work resentment kicks in and you will end up alienating that person. Okay, now don't use this as an excuse where you go up and you say something, you're like, well, didn't relate, so the circles don't overlap. No, adjust first, but do accept that in some cases, they just don't overlap, and in which case, it's not meant to be.